And we just wanted to be able to capture some of your thoughts for those people in Rotary that had, did not participate, didn't have a chance to come here. And this gives me an opportunity to ask both people who have an impact on peace a couple of just simple questions. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank what is your passion about peace? Why is it that you think this, of many things that you could affect on Earth, is a priority? Sharon, I'm a gentleman, and I always let the women speak first. Well, I think that, um, you know, 21 years ago I started working for the American Foundation for AIDS Research, and they asked me to work for three years. And I thought, oh, okay, we've got 11 million people with AIDS, this should be, I should be able to do this in three years. It doesn't seem like that big of a deal. And when I started speaking at the United Nations and I started speaking around the world, I started to realize it isn't just a question of this illness. It's a question about the way people see the person sitting next to them. And if we don't start really seeing the person next to us fairly and equally, we're not going to cure AIDS and hunger and poverty and everything. We're, we're ultimately, as these years went by and we got to the point where we are now where 44 million people have died of AIDS and another 40 million people are living with AIDS, I, through this journey which has just been, it, it, it's just so, it's been so extraordinary with, on one hand, all of the people that have come forward and been this army of goodness and helping to raise hundreds of millions of dollars and the scientists that never leave their overcrowded laboratories and that I spent time with at the Karolowski Institute, amazing. To the Carolina Institute, by the way, is a scientific branch that nominates for the Nobel Prizes in medicine and physics. And is that the one you're referring yes, to? Yes. Okay. And I sat with them and studied with them for days, and it was just astonishing. And, or to the people that will have running water in a hundreds of billions of dollar residence and will allow people to literally starve and not have clean water on the street next to them. The disparity that I see in human behavior is so enormous as to make me realize that there's just this fundamental thing that we have to be able to turn to the person next to us and see them. Yes, you're correct. And it seems like people nowadays, general, the general public, and even the world leaders, they do not hear, they do not see, they do not listen. For heaven's sake, the earth and the people are crying out loud and clear in so many different areas. They are hungry, they are poor, they are sick, and they are killing and destroying each other. They are raping both women and earth. That's crazy nonsense. We must start to tell the truth, the unvarnished truth. And tomorrow, when I have my chance to speak to the world media like you did today, I will tell them, we have to listen with our hearts. Be compassionate, be true. This affects us all. And if we do not listen, and if we do not take the action up, I know, Sharon, we will be plunged back into the dark ages. And we don't want that, we don't have to do it. We have been given a free will. We should choose it the right way. Do the right thing, the right stuff. And where does that right stuff come from? The seven rights, Sharon. I will tell you more about it tomorrow. Tell right now. thought, right thought. Our thoughts are creative, they're dynamic. Whatever you think materializes sooner or later. You think something that's good, it comes about. Something's bad, it's coming about. And Earth is a school, and we are here to learn. And the syllabuses and the curricula are established by the universe. And we are having a dualistic school here. Good and bad lessons, and we learn through them. And if we don't learn from them, then we are coming back and back and back again. This is not just a one visit. We I are coming back many times. I think sometimes that people look at the bad thing, yes. and they go to it because it feels comfortable, it feels familiar. But you have to recognize that you can't go into Chernobyl and just visit because it's fun for a second. You're going to get burned. 
Yes. And once you're burned, you have to heal and heal and heal and heal, and you can't just keep making yourself raw over and over again. You have to thoughtfully and decidedly close that door and say, you know what, that's not for me. Yes. And, it's, and it's not that funny, really. And step back and say, you know what, I think I'm going to take a better path. Yes. And truth, in fact, is a very exciting ride. People think that, oh, truth, you know, that's just that boring thing. It's more exciting yeah, to be bad. Truth just set you free. That's the best quote out of the Bible that I've ever heard. It, it, and it's not that easy. No. And it is exciting. It's very exciting to stand naked in the truth. It takes some guts to Absolutely. do that. Absolutely. You have to be much braver. And then the where you go is so much more exciting. It's a much better adventure. It's a real adventure. Truth is an adventure. So you both are extraordinarily busy people. Why is it that you decided to take your time to come here today? And more specifically, what is it about Rotary that you think affords an opportunity for peace? Well, as I see it, Rotary is the world's biggest peace organization. It has existed for 102 years, I guess, by now. And you're involved and you're connecting with each other all around the world, and peace is your leitmotif. That's the number one, peace. And both Sharon and I, and thousands and thousands of people who are in the uh, fortunate situation where we have a certain visibility through the media and can talk to them, we are here today because we want to help. We cannot empower the Rotarians. Heaven knows we are powerful enough, but we want to give the support and we want to come up with new ideas, thoughts, because certainly we can see that the old ideas and new thoughts, yes, it's a gas in the motor. Thank you. She's a good partner, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so it's be inspired and not, not go there if you, you know, no, I don't have time for that. I've been there. I, I don't touch that any longer. Be positive. See the future. Be happy. After all, it is in our foundation here. Uh, of the United States of pursuit of happiness, whatever. Right. That's beautiful. It's, it's nice. actually in our it's constitution. Our constitution. <laughs> and I think that the people who said the pursuit of happiness, yes. this is not a simple or silly or small thing. Any of us who have been taken down, taken down and really had to look at ourselves and our lives, understand the pursuit of happiness is, that's a big thing. It's a big right. And we also have to define a bit what happiness is, for heaven's sake. That is not in the materialistic side. The genuine happiness comes from the other side. Look upon our world here. It's like two sides. One is the materialistic side, and on the other side is the unseen, the spiritual side. And everything comes from this unseen side here, and then it gets created. But we are living in a kind of a spiritual famine nowadays. And then we are going out killing and shooting each other in God's name, because I am, or whatever religion, philosophy, I'm correct, and you don't know the truth. That is BS. <laughs> that the truth is kindness and happiness. Every virtue that you can think of, that is the truth. The other things are man-made stuff that we have gone wrong on. We have not been learn, learning the lessons. What do you think Rotary can do to truly have a material effect upon peace? What would you like to suggest? Rotary and other organizations Well, like they this. are doing so many good things by offering scholarships and master's degrees to all of these wonderful, including Uppsala uh, <laughs> University. Which, <laughs> we, <laughs> which we love. And it's really, really key, I think, to, to continue to educate people in the construct of peace, to make peace an actual degree that you can get and negotiating peace and mediating peace and actual educational format. Mm -hmm. Well, of course you speak very well and truthful, but you there was one thing you did not bring up, and that is the missing agenda. There's one agenda that is not being taught anywhere so far. And uh, the group that uh, Sharon and I are helping and hope to spearhead and launch here in this year, World Peace One. We are in the process of establishing a new curriculum named Earth Ethics. I would like to inform you more about that when we meet each other soon again. But Earth Ethics constitutes the totality of all virtues. 
and that in order to combat all the vices. Is there any message you would like to yes, give to Rotarians? Yes, my message is to the Rotarian. We would like the Rotarians to embrace earth ethics and help us to spread it around the world so it goes into the kindergartens and grade schools and high schools and university levels. Here, we have all the world's knowledge is right here. You do not have to go to a university or a school. You can just find it. It's here. And there's one, not one word, not one paragraph or sentence about earth ethics as of yet. So we want to create that around and we want We're to at a point input now, from many, many Within people. the next few yes. years, everybody will have access to a smartphone. Yes. Even in the most impoverished environments, there will be access to smartphones. Yes. We have the possibility and the probability to educate positively. And the key is that we form these programs and put them out in time to reach young people before they're indoctrinated into negativity. That we reach them with the alternative and most importantly, with the ability to view beyond man-made and invisible borders. Yes. So that they can see, yes. oh look, their mom looks like my mom, their food looks like my food, their street looks like my, look at that dog, it looks like my dog. So that they understand that these man-made monsters are actually invisible and non-existent. So that the fear that leads to hatred is erased before it begins. Well, on behalf of 1.2 million Rotarians worldwide, thank you for your voice, thank you for your leadership, and thank you for taking the time to come here and, and teach us. We will learn well. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.